Salutations, my name is Eclipse, EQ for short, and welcome to 100 Days in SevTech. SevTech is a mod pack that adds a little too much realism to Minecraft and makes it really hard. And I'm a masochist, so I wanted to try to survive 100 days in hardcore on this mod pack. Which means if I die even once, it's over. I broadcasted all of my pain for your viewing pleasure, so enjoy. And if you haven't already, consider leaving a like and subscribing. I know everyone says this, but it really does help the channel. And if you want to go the extra mile, consider leaving a comment so that the algorithm gods may bless me. Anyways, I'll keep this brief. Welcome to SevTech Hardcore 100 Days. Day one starts off like any other Minecraft world. Get wood, oh. Actually, to start off, you break grass to get twine, pick up some sticks on the ground to make a mesh. Using this mesh, we can sift through gravel blocks to get flint, sharpen that flint by breaking it on the ground, and then using the flint, plant twine, and a stick, you can make a flint hatchet. Using that, you can now chop a tree. If that sounds excessive, then you haven't seen anything yet. Next up with those logs, we'll make a chopping block to chop the logs into planks. After that use, we can make a crafting table. I, I mean, a work stump. Yeah, so basically this stump is a shitty crafting table because we don't get anything nice in Sevtech. Now I'm hiding in the hole for the first night. I already hate this mod pack. Day two, we need to get moving. Building a house in this mod seems kind of useless and a waste of materials, so instead, we're gonna steal someone else's. I'm looking for a village, and at the end of the day, I found one, and at night, I was bombarded, so I boarded up with this guy. You don't got a door either, homie? That's a mistake. We should have doors. The thing about this mod pack is that all the mobs have increased AI, and they even aggro through walls. I know you don't know who I am. My name is Ungla Bunglicus, and we are absolutely just screwed. There is a, there is, there's a hole in your roof. Stop. We will die. We're going to die out here. The next day came around, and I'm going to be honest. The only way I'm getting out of here is by digging to freedom. I dug into the town well uh, to freedom. Almost got blown up by a creeper. Obungula is off to a rough start. Well, the entire town is overrun, so now I gotta get the hell out of here and find another. This mod pack also has a quest line in it, and that's the only way to progress and get out of the Stone Age, so we're gonna need a village and the Darklands. The next day, Obungula stumbled upon a staircase, and let's just see what's- Oh, no, 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 no. Anyways, found a new village on day four, and the local wolf population hates me. That's nothing new. Later on in the day, I was looking for what limited recipes I have, and we need to make a grindstone. It's the biggest thing. It will allow us to get other resources for more crafting recipes. But it's getting late, so I decided to make Obungula Shack 2.0, hunker down for the night, and work on the grindstone. After a whole night of trying to get fire to work, I crafted a grindstone, and then immediately made a mill, which was stupid because I need a lever to flick it, and the recipe to make it is this. Like, you want me to make a gear? Really? The only thing Obungula can make right now is people disappointed. That and this nature's compass, which should point directly to the Darkland. Yay, more running! It's the only thing Obungula's good at. After another day of running, I found the Darklands. Why did I want the Darklands? Because using oak from these trees, we can turn crates that hold nine items into full-blown chests. Yes, I just went across the world to make a chest. Welcome to Sevtech. Oh, Bungula, baby! Oh, my fucking god. <laughs> oh, my fuck. I hate this mod. I fucking hate it here so much. Hold on, wait. There's an advanced one. Please just be a normal chest. Please, for the love of fuck, be a normal chest. Oh, you know, good enough. Oh, Bungula's okay with it. The rest of the day, I chopped some wood. Life is good. And fast forwarding a bit here, you can see my house is coming together. I sure hope nothing bad happens to it. Day eight, I'm examining all my quests and I got a lot of shit to do. And to start, I'm gonna need some wood. So I went home to get some. And when I got back home, I still need a village, so I'm just gonna go look for that instead. Maybe I can find one near the Darklands or in the Darklands, that works too. Well, since my home was, renovated, I'm gonna hobble up in this one and hope no one minds. 
Obungula has staken claim. At night, I ran around looking for mobs because we actually need to kill some. But as you can see by my hearts, it didn't go very well. I'll hide for tonight then. I'm getting real sick and tired of the mobs killing all my villagers. Luckily, I found this dark village on the water and I'm able to protect it as long as I'm not there at night. This will be the trading grounds. I literally can't make windows, so my windows, quote unquote, are just logs that I take down in the daytime. We're starting to run low on food, so I'm looking for a way to use the stone grill I made to cook some. But Obungula stupid, I guess, because for some reason, putting a grill over a fire pit doesn't heat the grill. And I set myself on fire. Whoops. At least this kind of works for a grill, but the fire is inconsistent and I need like 300 sticks. In case you're already in the comment section telling me how to do this better, I want to let you know that I did this mod pack blind. And I know there are better ways to do it, but I didn't know at the time. Oh, and while you're there commenting, can we just get everyone to comment, uh, Obungula? Because I think that'd be really funny. At night, since buckets aren't a thing yet, we made a fluid bladder with an ink sack and dye. And now we can start making leather. Now pay attention to this recipe on how to make leather. Keep in mind, this is how you get leather in vanilla Minecraft. To make leather, all you need is animal hide in about nine hours. See, what you do is you take this animal pelt and chop it up into raw hide. Then find some salt in your local ravine and smack it on there with some water from your sack. Now you have salted wet hide. Dry that shit using a drying rack and what do you know, it's dry. Now, motherfucker, wet it again. This time with resin that you get from trees that you have to grind from a grindstone, no less, that you have to do by hand because Obungula doesn't have anything yet. And finally, boom, you have wet hide so now put that shit up to dry again for a whole minecraft day all while contemplating the existence of the universe and now you've made one piece of leather god i hate sevtech i repeated this process on day 14 to make sure i have enough leather for things like leads saddles and oh yeah armor that might be kind of important right now if anything looks at obungula the wrong way i'm pretty sure he has to write an obituary but i actually use the leather to build a teepee it's a permanent bed and i'm rather happy that i'll eventually get to sleep at least once in these 100 days i can't place it in my house though and that later that night i was kind of trapped by a shadow demon now this guy's completely cheating hold on i don't appreciate this kind of maltreatment he is just shooting me through a wall, I am protected by an entire wall, and that man just does not care. At least play fair, dickhead. He dropped multiple dark gems, and now I have plenty for future recipes. Day 15, I crafted a kiln. This is gonna be one of the most important things I've made so far. Once the kiln is set down, you can fire it up and make a proper kiln that can smelt blocks like wood to make low-grade charcoal, which will never burn out. That's something I'm making here. And just like that, Obungula has created infinite fire. Afterwards, it was getting late, so I broke my log blockade protecting me, and I slept in my teepee for the rest of the night. I know it seems like Obungula has absolutely nothing going for him, but with the Totempedia, we can read and learn about dances. Building a totem like this and chiseling it, we can play the Rite of Spring with a flute and maracas and drums. This will turn all of the saplings around it into red cedar that is no longer in this world. We need this wood to make gears and stuff for later. Remember the whole mill spiel? So I'm getting it early. This dance was easy to pull off, but future ones definitely won't be because it scales by difficulty and I'm playing on hardcore. Day 17, I had to make a wind chime and pull a cow over here to turn this cow into a buffalo, also an extinct creature. It's so great that Obungula is able to play God right now, but he can't even make a fucking door. Killing the buffaloes, I get their teeth. Please don't call PETA. I need to make gears or Obungula dies. Now all I need is the bone eagle whistle and I'll be able to play the rest of the ritual. Similar to the buffalo dance, we need to turn parrots into the extinct bald eagle. To get them though, we need to travel to the place of the horses. So I'm gonna make a saddle so we can also pick up a horse. We'll need them later. The next day, I took a saddle and a lead out of the savanna, found me some parrots that totally didn't die in the lava the first time, and a horse. Then I realized horses can't swim, so to get back home, I have to do this for like 10 minutes. Let's move on. I got him home, and now it's time for the eagle dance, which was not easy. I tried all day to get this to work. I even upgraded my flute and drums. The dance of the eagles. You shall become a bird! You shall become a beautiful bird! A beautiful one! I, I believe in your abilities to be, to metamorphosize into a bird! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, it's gonna be so close! Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me! Say no damn thing, I'm just going. That's it this time. That's it this time. This is fucking easy money. Easy money, dude. It was a second drum. He's an eagle. Fuck yeah. 
And now, with this eagle whistle, we are good to go for the final dance in the- But we'll wait on that for a bit. Using a lead, I can now attach my horse to a horse-powered chopping block, grindstone, and press, and they will be automatically made for me, so I don't have to spam the grindstone all day. I've been cutting that out for you guys, but it takes absolutely forever. Now that that's taken care of, we can work on totem tons. That's literally how you say it, dear, dear fucking god. Now that that's taken care of, we can now work on totem tons the final song in dance. There's others, but they aren't very important. This is the hardest one to pull off and I've tried all day and couldn't get it. You can even see that I'm wearing armor that's a skirt with bells that jingle, adding more sound. Plus, it makes me look pretty. The next day, I added another wind chime and if the wind blows, I may be lucky enough to get things ready. And at night, I finished it and the boss, Baycock, spawned. Excuse me? Huh? Oh shit! <laughs> oh fuck! I saw it up! Okay, uh, I didn't prep anything. I don't have food. I, uh, I have food now. Okay, cool. Uh, the, the shit. I didn't prep a goddamn thing. Uh, I don't ever think. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I got it, I got it, I got it. Holy shit, we summoned him. Oh, is that you? Oh, f you did not just give me a fucking free win. So yeah, basically this fight was free, and the reason I wanted to get him is because upon death, he drops Baycock's bow, which gives us early access to a bow and arrow. But hey, I technically killed Baycock and Hardcore Sevtech. But hey, I technically killed Baycock and Hardcore Sevtech. Don't care how janky it was, I win. Day 25 is menial tasks day. Hey, after that close call with Baycock, I think I deserve it. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to make porcelain. We need porcelain, a grill, and a flame-grilled whopper, which is why I needed those dark gems in the first place. And on day 26, I actually made it. Don't mind me, just getting attacked through the wall. And after crafting the melter, we have finally made our way into age one. Finally, out of the Stone Age. Also still getting abused in here, don't worry, don't mind me, I'm just gonna hide in a hole for the night. Making it to age one has insane perks. Like, I can actually make a fucking crafting table and <gasps> a door! Oh, and we can even make torches. <laughs> what is this shit, the future? Obungula's never been this high tech. Day 28. Day 28, I tried to learn how to use porcelain pipes, but even though I'm no longer a caveman, I still have caveman brain. So it didn't work, and when I don't understand something, I do two things. One, I lay down and cry, and two, I Google it. So BRB. Okay, I'm back and I've made some plans. What I'm gonna do is take all the stuff from my village and move out. It's time to expand. So I'm spending all day moving my stuff to the new location across the pond with this horse carriage. The next few days, we're actually setting up the camp. Obungula doesn't have a lot right now, so I thought we'd make his life a little bit nicer. I made sure to elevate the house so that mobs can't easily get in and burn it down. We made a section for farming, a section for automation, a section for chests. The next night, I made a totem section, just in case I need it again, and was attacked by every Every mob in the world. The problem with this is that these fuckers do more damage now and it's gonna make my life more difficult as, you know, I'm in wolf hide and leather. That doesn't protect you very well. By the end of night 31, my base was looking really quaint and not Neanderthal-y at all. So I ventured off with my horse, we'll call her Fudge, to search for cows. The goal is to breed the cows over and over and over until I have infinite meats. Yay. Day 32, I tried bringing home one or two cows and um, I found a couple extra stragglers. It's okay, everyone. There's plenty of this one piece of wheat to go around. I also made a place for farming, so food is completely covered. Day 33, I found some geode samples on the ground. Let me explain this. Basically, ores in this game are much more akin to real life than Minecraft. You can only find ores in giant clusters around the map. You're supposed to use a dowsing rod to find them, but if I'm being honest, I've literally never used it successfully. Instead, just find a geode sample and then dig down and you'll usually find the vein. We need two ores, Cassarite and Malachite. These can be smelted using that smelter we made at the end of age zero into tin and copper respectively. Yeah, and just in case you weren't like paying attention, I've been using stone tools for the past 33 days. I got both of them today. The next ore sample we need to find, of course, is coal. This one happens to be really rare though and I went looking for it all day. Barely found anything, but the sample seemed promising. So I mined down and... And I found casserites, not coal. What the hell? Waste of time. Day 35 was spent mining all of my new ore. In the smelter, you can only smelt one type of ore at a time, so this took forever even after automating it with hoppers and chests. Taking that copper, I smacked with a hammer against a stone anvil, and I made copper sheets for tools and gear. But I now have copper tools and copper gear, which I found out isn't much stronger than leather. For an upgrade, we're gonna need to alloy it with tin and make bronze. So I wasted copper. 
So I'm building a leather station by the water to make this easier. Plus, with a bucket and grinder, I should be able to churn leather much quicker now. Day 37, I made the rest of the copper gear, which is a huge mistake, because I'm literally going to replace it in like two days from now. But Obungula was never the brightest tack in the shed. And more leather making. You better be glad I'm cutting this out, because it's really boring. Like, my god, making leather shouldn't be this fucking difficult. The last of the tin is almost done, so in the meantime, I made another saddle, and I want to pick up another horse so we can get automation. I found one that was fantastic. Fantastic, and brought her back home with Fudge. I'll call her Rocky Road. She'll be powering the grindstone, and Fudge will be powering the chopping block. The next day, we are finally able to alloy the tin and copper. Using this alloy and some charcoal, I can make bronze ingots. Yes! Finally! Day 40, this dumb tree grew in the way of my house, so I took it down and used all the wood to make a hunting dimension portal. This portal will take you to the hunting dimension, which is pretty much just a flat plane with trees and a lot of mobs to fight. Don't know why I'd plan to do that when everything two shots me, but you know what? We have this as an option now. I also turned all of my bronze plates into bronze weapons and armor. This is huge for me. I've been using stone and the equivalent of it for Obungula's entire life, and I'm so happy to have something only slightly worse than iron. Oh, did I forget to mention that bronze is only slightly worse than iron? Not even better? Yeah, I hate Sevtech. The next day was more questing. I have to complete them all to progress to the next age. After spamming instruments, I turned two cows to buffalo, and since this is age one, I can now see that they are actually growing and that that wasn't as big as they got. They're also breedable, so buffaloes are good to has. There are so many little things to do in these 100 days. I'm sorry if it seems like I'm running rampant, but Obungula got a lot to do and not a lot of time to get it done. There's no way we finish everything in 100 days. We're totally going to need like a 200 days. Wink, wink. Comment down below for that. Wink, wink. But I do want to make at least a lot of progress. So on day 42, I crafted a plum thingy. I don't remember its name while writing this script, but it's really useful. If you right click it, get ready for this. It tells you the Y level. Yeah, I know, fucking blown away, but now we have one coordinate. Woo! Is this an offering? I can offer you this. You just gotta give it to me. That's not working, buddy. Here, uh, let me try. Fuck, no, it didn't. Wait, hold on, wait. No, 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 no let me, no, I just, just take it. I spent the rest of the day using hoppers to automate the presser, now buffalo powered, and the grindstone and chopper. If you're wondering where Rocky Road went, well, I am too. The motherfucker just despawned. Like, that's fine. I'm not hurt or anything. Later that night, I made a bed so I could cry myself to sleep in it. I miss you, Rocky Road. And day 43, with all the menial tasks complete, it's time to build the Necronomicon. Yes, Obungula is literally summoning and controlling demons before he gets windows on his house. You guys remember the dungeon we saw on day three or four? That was a Shoggoth's den. And this motherfucker hits hard. Luckily in water, he's pretty useless. I need to collect their flesh and some monolith stone, which is what their dungeon is made out of. So I did that all night. In day 44, I'm running around and trying to figure out how to make monolith statues. These will help charge the Necronomicon so I can do demonic magic and ritual. I wasn't joking, Obungula's literally gonna perform dark arts before we get windows. At night while I was looking up something though, this happened. I really need to get some fences around this base. Day 45, I set up a charging station for my demon, but I forgot to charge the statues with Shoggoth flesh. There we go. That's better. I can't stay here, though, because lightning will frequently strike this place and me if I'm holding this book. Not only would that hurt, but it has a chance to give me poison, wither, Shoggoth poisoning, and even spawn Shoggoths. So, no thank you. Instead, I want to make a pedestal for the book to charge on while I'm not around. And to get that, we need an ore called Coralium. Where can you find that, you ask? Where's the one biome I haven't been to this whole 100 days? The most inconvenient and out of the way location. That's right, a fucking swamp. I haven't found a guy that will sell me an atlas yet, so I'm going only with the memory of the world. I'm sure I won't get lost. Getting better Minecraft flashbacks. Day 47, I'm trying to run to the southeast. That's where the wet and warm biomes are, which describes the swamp perfectly. I found one. Corallium is everywhere here, but that doesn't mean it's easy to get because everything can kill me so easily. Anyways, I got the Corallium, now it's time to go home.
which way was it again? This literally took me four days to find my way back home. And I probably wouldn't have even been able to if it wasn't for where I live. Because I live in the Darklands, or at least on the outskirts. I'm able to find these biomes using a nature compass. Using that and the fact that I know the chords of the first dark biome because the compass tells you, I was able to retrace my steps till I found my way back home. I got really lucky here. But man, before I go off on another of Obungula style adventure, I really need a fucking atlas. Now that I'm settled back home, we can start demonic rituals. Yay! Making a stone foundation like this and right clicking it with a spooky book makes a ritual pedestal center chamber section doohickey type thing. And of course, to do anything, Obungula needs more monolith stone. After getting that monolith stone, we can now complete our first ritual. You do the rituals by placing items in each pedestal and in the middle, right click it with the Necronomicon. I do have to be careful though. Some rituals require a sacrifice and if it's not given, I don't know what happens. The book just said don't let that happen. This one didn't require any, however, so the deadly chant is finished and now we have a pedestal. Now we can charge our Necronomicon with next to no danger. Perfect. Later that night, I went to go lasso some demonic wills. By trapping these enemies in snares and killing them while they're glowing, we are able to get a couple demonic wills to get everything done for age one. Like the Blood Altar and Hellfire Forge. The Blood Altar is used to enrich some orbs and ores for crafting the- SHUG OFF ATTACK! Ah! Orbs for crafting the Beneath Portal. And we need to do that to progress, so on to some blood magic. While I was learning though, a magma boy rolled up to me and I bopped him. Fucking weird. Anyway, let's get- So to get this to work, we need a sacrificial dagger and to cut ourselves and drain all of Obungula's blood so that we can infuse fucking lightning shot off strike, why? Anyways, using our blood, we can enrich items. Not this one though, cause I'm an idiot. I need a tier two blood altar for that. To get a tier two blood altar, we need to get runes, which I'll start making- Hello, Shoggoth, right now. Using rotten flesh and a melter, we can make balls of blood that I need to enchant. Actually, they're reusable and I only needed to make one, but Obungula is dumb, so I made like nine. On top of that, we need some buffalo teeth, so I gotta thin out the herd. On top of that, we need some buffalo teeth, so I gotta thin out the herd. The only big problem with getting blood is to replenish your hearts to get more blood, you have to eat a lot. So I'm breeding, killing, eating, and bleeding all day. Day 60, I used these buffalo teeth and made the wrong fucking gear. Look, they look the exact same. So now I gotta do it again. Fuck me. Also, just in case you were wondering, I'm still draining enough blood to fill the Hoover Dam. Anyways, more buffalo and more blood. This is literally the only way to progress. I have to do this. Day 62, I'm using stone, the smooth stuff, not cobble, and enriching it to make rune. At night, I had a really close call with death for like the 3000th time. I swear this has to be one of the hardest mod packs I've ever played simply because you're just starved of resources for like a million hours. Mobs and stuff keep coming in, and I don't want to have to deal with near-death experiences and creepers going boom, because everyone knows Obungula is too soft to deal with stuff like that. So I'm fencing around the base, something I should have done on like day two, but I was a little busy being a fucking caveman. Now that I'm more classy, we can have some safety. Finally, I can upgrade the blood altar. The reason I need to do this is because I have to enrich a Corallium Pearl, and you can only enrich it with a tier two blood altar. And before you comment, yes, I know, I didn't have to make the runes look fancy, but look, I did this whole thing blind and fucking up as a part of Obungula's adventure and culture. Anyways, I placed the... Anyways, I placed the pearl in the altar and all fucking day it just sucked the blood away from me. This thing sucks more blood than a bungula sucks redacted. Day 65? Yep, this is taking forever. Day 66, I thinned out the local llama population around the camp and at night, I did it. We now have the apprentice orb, the key ingredient to build the beneath teleporter. Now I need a lot of copper and tin to make the blank teleport. The recipe looks like this. Obungula needs copper. Obungula gets copper. I also found this really cool coal vein, so I'm gonna just dig down and get it.
fuck. Okay, so that was close. Like, I don't even have a pickaxe anymore close. I swear, Obuncula, can you stop trying to die for like 10 seconds? Anyways, day 68, with the coal, copper, tin, and bronze, and of course the all-important apprentice orb, we can now make the blank teleporter. All that's left is to do the ritual. But you see, this is Eclipse, and I just wouldn't be me if I didn't do this. If you haven't seen my first modded 100 days, if you haven't, you totally should, I made a 69 sign on the sex number day out of diamonds and glazed terracotta. Well, Obungula is nowhere near that fortunate, so he's gonna make it out of what he has. And it's so fucking ugly that I am proud. Good job, Obungula. Afterwards, what better way to celebrate the sex day but with making a portal straight to hell, the Beneath. Oh God, the demons. The demons are speaking to Obungula. They're speaking his language. He listens. It's been done. Now I'm nowhere prepared for the Beneath yet, so I'm gonna have to prep all day. Luckily, I've played mod packs that have the beneath in it before, so I at least know what to expect. I need a lot of blocks, food, torches, and a good sword. Day 70, it was time. I right-clicked the portal and... In the beneath, if you stay in darkness, you will repeatedly take damage. And in hardcore, that's not good. Plus, all the mobs have double health, and I don't know if it's in this version, but normally they do two times the amount of damage as well. The reason we're even here in the first place is to find black quartz and aquamarine. The former being found at the bottom, while the latter is at the top. And I have no idea how you're actually supposed to collect this stuff, but I went with the method of run around, place torches, run, mine, run away, run again, run away, run again, mine, run away, screaming like a little girl, run away, mine. And it worked pretty well. I got nearly a stack of quartz, but I'm out of torches, so I gotta be back. So I went back home and grinded quartz all day. Well, this is gonna take a while. So it's time for some blatant plugging. If you're enjoying this, then make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. If you're new, you aren't gonna wanna miss the crazy shit I have planned. Plus, you don't wanna miss Obungula's adventure. You hit the subscribe button. Obungula's gonna cry if you don't. You don't want Obungula to cry. You know how much shit he has to go through on the daily? Just hit the subscribe button. Day 71, I geared up again and went searching for Aquamarine. It was nowhere near as common and even more scary to find because I had the fear of falling all the time. But I did manage to get some, and by the end of day 71, I have a total of seven now. I hope that's enough. There's a reason I needed both these ores, though. At the end of age one, there are two paths you have to complete. Astral magic and machinery. To do machinery, you make an axle and you need to build it with black quartz. And to make the astral path, we're gonna need to infuse paper with aquamarine to make an astrology guide. I'm gonna go with machinery first though. So I farmed hemp seeds all day, which you put the hemp in the mill and then it makes hemp string, which we can use to make a wooden axle. That takes forever though, so on top of it, I fired a clay bowl to make a cauldron so that we can make glue. Glue can be used to make gears so no more buffalo have to die for Obungula's quest to be even slightly competent. And the next day I built a water wheel that I didn't know how to use. And then I mined copper and cassiterite all day. We need a lot of each of these because I need to build a saw, which looks insane. And it is. It's very resource intensive, but it's required, so I'm working on it. Now, because of course I have to, the next thing to do is to go find a super rare tree called Mulberry. Now, even the game says it's fairly common, but I call bullshit. Silver lining, as I was running in a random direction, staying on the same path as to not get lost, I ran into a little hut, and for some reason, it bounced me. There you go. That's what it, oh! But that's not all. There was a villager inside of the tent and, oh my God, he sells a fucking Atlas. I got all the stuff he requested and I gave it to him. And finally, 75 days in, I have a fucking rudimentary way to see where I am. Woo! But this book doesn't help me with trying to find the super fucking common goddamn mulberry motherfucker. I went searching and searching. I'm not kidding, like this thing has like a set spawn rate where there's supposed to be like one per biome and about 50 biomes later, I gave up and went to Google. And right after I came back from shamefully searching, I fucking find it. Whatever, you better drop a sampling, you piece of mother loving bark bark little Okay, good. The next day I backtracked my way back home so I can get back on track to make progress that I can track back to what's back to back. Track. So it's a leather belt in the middle, wrapped in. Two copper gears and a bronze gear. The base is acacia planks, and we top it with the actual saw blade, and I've made a saw. The saw is very useful, because when you attach it to the water wheel, you can cut blocks much faster and get different types of blocks, like verti slabs, which we need to make a turntable. Why? Just keep watching, it'll blow you away. If you like mundane things, that is. Day 79, I had a gamer thought. If the water wheel makes things schmoove and spin on their own, and if I hooked up the mill to it, <gasps> 
There's so much IQ. There's so much IQ. Oh, I'm a genius. Oh my god. Fuck the. Uh, fuck, fuck EQ. My name is IQ now. I did it. I did it. I didn't look up a tutorial. It didn't tell me that in the book. I did it. I fucking did it. We can now get hemp for forever. I am the smartest caveman to ever exist. Obungula's brain stretches past infinity. Bow down before my infinite IQ. Then right after, I ate a fruit and got poisoned. The world is balanced. Okay, day 80. It's time to make a bucket. Yeah, you know the thing that most Minecrafters make in like 10 minutes? Yeah, well, 24 total hours into SevTech, it's time to make one. Only a clay one though, so we can't move lava just yet. But here we go. Use a turntable and put a clay extension on it to make a clay bucket. Fire the bucket and now we can move water around. I feel like a god. And now we've completed machinery. So on to the final part of age one, astrology. And in classic Sevtech fashion and over the top crafting method later, I've made parchment. Infuse that with aquamarine and voila, we have the book of astrology which tells us to make a luminous crafting table. And I'll spare you the details, but my ass was one aquamarine short of making it. So it's back to the beneath we go. And with that last ingredient, I started the ritual. I picked up the luminous table and welcome to age two. Age two is just as cracked, if not more, but silver lining, Obungula can finally make glass. That's right, buddy, we get windows. And of course, I'm sure everyone knows the mod that's up next, Tinker's Construct. So I spent the rest of the day getting gravel, sand, and clay to make some grout. We're gonna get this furnace up and running and maybe even get some iron. Only problem with that is that they fucked up the recipe. To make a smeltery, you need a controller. And to make that in this mod, we need a gem from the Betweenlands? God fucking damn it! Why can't anything be simple? Also, gold now spawns. I found some samples next to my base, so I dug down to get some and... What game? Did Obungula just do its first MLG bucket clutch and crash the server? Obungula! <laughs> it auto saves, it should be fine, but Obungula, what the fuck? Loading the world back up, water didn't even spawn, which I know is bullshit because it clearly did on this frame. I don't know if this counts as a genuine loss. Um, let me know in the comments, but I'm calling shenanigans. So I opened land, revived myself, please don't be mad, and we kept going. Day 84, just like everything else in this game, the between land stuff is really hard to get, so we need to find a shrine. So I'm venturing off. I'm also looking for rock crystals, iron, and gold, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, and did someone say yet another close call? Found iron and ender. They spawned now, and I just know you guys were looking for another close call. You know, to be honest, I give Obungula a lot of shit, but he's really resilient. He's managed to pull through everything that's been thrown at him so far. He's <laughs> always doing his best, and I know that he puts his best foot forward. And at the end of day 87, we found the crazy, really difficult shrine. But you know what? I believe in you, Obungula. Go get him. <laughs> oh, fuck. That is bullshit. You've got to be fucking... I gotta kill four of these, at least. And they have like a 50%... Huh? Oh, I, I was talking to the Dark Druid, but hello to you too. I mean, we've been speaking all... Uh, no. Oh, no. I was worried, or wondering about that too. Uh, boo! Oh, fuck off! This is going to kill me. Oh, dear. He's gonna teleport, he's gonna teleport, I'm dead. Oh, uh, well then, um, okay. Holy shit, dude. They have so much health, 
This is like I'm 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 not just being dumb here. This is if we open the land and that way I could press L again. This is the next thing to do. I mean, I could really go and fight a sea temple instead. I didn't think that would be easier. I could make paper. Paper's not gonna help me kill the dark druid. Well, I guess we <laughs> fucking lose, dude. Um, this challenge is bullshit hard. I, I, I implore anyone to try to make a hardcore 100 days SevTech. Uh, this is not fucking easy. Let me know in the comments section below if you guys want me to try this again. Um, I'll have so much more knowledge this time. I'll literally have to start from the ground up. Um, yeah, l let me know. So that's sadly where this ends for now. This is the hardest mod pack I've ever played, simply because of how restrictive it is. I do want to try to conquer it again, so if you want to see that, make sure to leave a like and a comment telling me you do. I also want to thank everyone for the support recently. We just hit 31,000 subscribers at the time of recording this or something, and I know the community is just going to keep growing and flourishing. I've got a lot of cool stuff coming your way, so make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and if you enjoyed this video, hit the, hit the, hit the fucking like button. I think it was pretty good. I'm proud of it. But yeah, that's my hardcore 100 days SevTech attempt number one. I'm not perfect, sometimes I fail these. My name has been Eclipse, EQ for short, and thank you for watching. <laughs>